Hey everybody, hope you're all doing alright out there. So I've been asked to explain how quick shifters work and I thought well let's do a video on how quick shifters work and how auto blippers work. Uh, quick shifters allow you to shift up, auto blippers allow you to shift down without using the clutch, but how that actually works is different for each and uh, yeah as I say someone ex asked me to explain how exactly it's done. Now this bike itself hasn't got a quick shifter but it's fine because I can still explain everything to you using this bike. Okay, first things first, how does a motorcycle gearbox work? I actually have a video on that specifically, and I also have one on cars, so if you want to watch the full videos, do watch those links up here and down there. Unlike a car gearbox, which uses synchro rings, and you can select any gear, so you can go like from first to third on a motorcycle, it is a constant mesh sequential box. Constant mesh means all the gears are always touching, but what one's being driven is changed by a drum. I'm trying to keep this simple without overcomplicating it. Just know that the gears are always there and depending on which one's selected is what gear you have. On the side of those gears there are teeth like this that have to go in between like that so they catch. When you change gear you want them to be apart or with no pressure on them from the engine. This is known as float point. So just know that when we're trying to change gear we're trying to do it at a time that these teeth aren't going to go into each other. They're going to have no real pressure on them. They're just going to click together. And the sequential part of that means that we have to go first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And if you want to go to third, you'd have to then go fifth, fourth, third. You can't jump gears. You have to go up and down through the whole set. Which is why the expression drop a gear and disappear is so silly. Because on a bike like this, you have to drop like two or three gears before you actually disappear. So if we're riding with a normal manual bike like this, we obviously have to use the clutch to change gear. What the clutch is doing is disengaging the drive from the gearbox for a moment and giving that uh, the teeth a moment to find that float point that gap between the gears. Now when it comes to upshifting, you don't actually have to use your clutch if you time it correctly. You can do a thing called clutchless upshifting, which I'll show you now. What I'm going to do is accelerate along, I have to let the throttle off very slightly to relieve pressure on the gearbox, and then I can click up a gear. See? No need for the clutch. Now you can clutch the shift downwards, but it's not as easy, and I wouldn't really advise it myself. I wouldn't do it. I mean, I have a couple of times, but generally I'll only, you know, clutch the shift upwards. So how do quick shifters work? This is either factory installed on your bike, or you can even buy kits to fit it to any bike, because it's actually a very simple thing. Here, you have a bar that is part of the linkage for the gear shift. This is actually where the gear shift is, but you use this lever down here, and as you can see, the whole thing moves. If you put a pressure switch in this rod, as in you replace this rod with another rod with a pressure switch in it, when you go to change gear, it notices that. It also has a wire that goes up into the loom, and it basically, when it gets actuated, it cuts the spark of the engine, relieving power from the gearbox for a moment, which gives the gearbox a moment to be relaxed and let those teeth connect more smoothly in that float point. If they're still under power, they're just gonna end up smacking into each other and they can round off the edges and it means that it can slip out of gear. So that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? If you don't wanna use the clutch, you can let off the throttle for a moment or you can have a quick shifter on the bike, which is gonna cut the ignition for a split moment while you change gear, relieving pressure on the gearbox the same way that, well, it's the same but different way that the clutch relieves pressure on the gearbox. So that is upshifting. Now those kits can be bought to fit to nearly any bike because it's a lot easier to cut ignition for a moment than it is to do what you need to do for downshifting where you'll need something called an auto blipper. Also be aware that motorcycles like my DRZ 400 SM that don't have a gear linkage, the gear shifter is directly connected to a shaft on the engine itself. You can actually get quick shifters for these it's either a replacement shifter or a replacement end that notices the up click from or down click, depending on what it is, uh, from your foot. When it comes to downshifting on a motorcycle, there is a couple of ways of doing it. You can do the classic old throttle off clutching, click down, and then you know throttle back on and clutch out. That is the normal way and the way you're taught to change gear. Now there is actually a much smoother way of doing it, which is called blip shifting or rev matching, and I have a whole video on that too. I suggest you watch that if you want to get better on your downshifts. But the long and the short of it is that as you're slowing down, you will blip the throttle for each downward gear change. What you're doing there is increasing the revs to what they would be when you're in the lower gear. Because obviously as you go down the gears, your, your RPMs are going to increase for whatever speed you're doing. 
you know, think lower RPM, lower RPM, lower RPM, faster RPM, faster RPM, faster RPM. Now during that rev match, there actually is a point that you could downshift while the teeth are in that float position where it's safe to do so, but it's a very small gap. And that's why you use the clutch as well, because it means that you're, you know, you're just worrying about making sure that the RPMs match rather than getting everything to fit together nicer. So the way auto blippers work or downshifters is that they will hook into the bike's electronics and it will give the throttle a little blip when you click down a gear. So when you click down, you'll hear the bike go brrr for just, just for a moment. And what that does, as I say, is it brings all the RPMs together and it also means everything's in time to give you a nice smooth downshift. Because it has to fit into the wiring of the bike itself and be able to actuate the throttle, there aren't as many universal systems, you know, or I don't think there are any truly universal systems that would fit between any bike. It has to fit in with a system that can talk to the throttle and stuff like that. You then also tend to use an app, both with uh, auto blippers and quick shifters that connects to your phone, where you can adjust the timings by milliseconds to get it s as smooth as you, you want and make sure it works well with your bike. Factory ones, obviously are designed for the bike and will just work perfectly. And obviously the way the auto blipper knows that you're shifting is it has one of those in rod switches, but it works in both ways. Um, quick shifter auto blipper bikes are also known as having a bi-directional shifter, as in it will go both ways. If something is just a quick shifter, it's only up. If they say auto blipper, it's technically only down, but you don't really get down without up because you've got the switch there anyway. So that is what a quick shifter and an auto blipper is. And what it basically means is that when you're riding the bike around, other than start and stop, you don't use the clutch to change gear, ever. On some bikes, it can be really, really smooth. On other bikes, I've felt it's been really clunky and feels wrong. Most bikes are really good with it at higher RPMs, but where a lot of bikes struggle with quick shifters and auto uh, blippers is in the lower RPMs, where it, it just can't match things as easily and as smoothly because, you know, it's, it's lower RPMs, it's hard for it to do. So there you go, that's how quick shifters work, how auto blippers work, what they are, what it's like if you have one factory on your bike, and whether you can fit one to yours or not, uh, that's a question you'll have to do a bit of research and see if anyone sells one that matches. Okay, a couple of questions that normally get asked. Will clutchless upshifting damage your gearbox? Not if you do it correctly, no. Will quick shifters and auto blippers damage your gearbox? No, actually, in theory, because they can be uh, changing gear at a much more precise time than even you with a clutch, it can actually mean you have less wear on your gearbox by using one of them because it definitely gets the gear change in the float point. You don't get any knocking of those, uh, those teeth as it engages each gear. Does clutchless downshifting damage your motorcycle? Well, as I've mentioned here, I don't like doing it. In theory, yes, you can do it, but it's just something I don't like doing. It's a little harder to get the matching right. Because the thing you have to remember is if you're accelerating, the bike's gonna feel pressure on one set of teeth. And if you're decelerating, it's gonna feel the pressure on the other side of the teeth because of the, the force of the bike moving forward and it all getting forced through the rear wheel by the chain. Hopefully you get what I mean by that. There is also a thing to point out here that a lot of new riders seem to get very excited about clutchless shifting in their first few years and they discover that it's a thing. Uh, and and you know, there's lots and lots of videos on clutchless shifting. Honestly, the only reason you do it, generally, is because you're trying to accelerate faster with the, the least amount of time between shifts. However, some people clutchless upper shift is their riding style. I don't. Uh, but I do blip shift on the way down, which is not something that everyone does either. Although a lot of people do. If you want to know more about how a motorcycle gearbox works, or even the engine, or the, a car gearbox, I have some quite old videos at this point, but they're very good at explaining a complicated thing very simply, and it really has helped a lot of people. My How Does a Motorcycle Engine Work video actually is one of my most viewed videos. It's very funny, it's very old, but it does cover what you need to know. I really would love to update one, but I need I need a new engine. We're an old engine, you know, to have as a, as a prop. Well, there we go. Hopefully that answers all your questions. If you found this video interesting or useful, do hit the like button, subscribe if you are new here. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to help support this channel, you can do that through Patreon. Uh, that gets you into my Discord, gets you videos early, some other benefits as well. You can also support me by buying some of my merch, where links in the descriptions. And there's even a PayPal there if you want to do a one-off direct donation to help support the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.